All right, orbits. So this is 6.2 orbits. It's the end of the chapter already. Look how quickly that went. Um, I think this is a cool, cool little section. It's a lot like that one problem that we had on the the unit test that you saw, um, where we were looking at a satellite and figuring out how far it need, needs to be or how fast it's going as it's orbiting. So we're going to see all the math behind that now. Satellite, what is a satellite? It is an object that revolves around another object because of gravity. Because of gravity. So I think you know what satellites are. You've, you've seen, um, if you look up in the night sky, you can sort of see them going around. Now there are different types of satellites. There's natural satellites and artificial satellites. So artificial satellites, this is an object intentionally put in orbit by humans. Now, I mean, maybe there are other artificial satellites that aliens have been putting up. I don't know anything about that. But for now, we'll just say by humans. Okay, so these are the, the satellites that do GPS, this sort of thing. Natural satellites, that's something like the moon. The moon is a natural satellite of Earth. Earth is a natural satellite of the sun. These are natural satellites. Okay, and um, one useful thing for satellites is GPS. Your phone, it has GPS, it can tell you where you are. So what is GPS? Well, it's the Global Positioning System. And in the world, the whole GPS system is made up of 24 satellites. Actually, um, sometimes it's about maybe 30, actually. But really, all it needs is 24 satellites. There's not many more than that. That's the whole world is covered by these 24 satellites. Now, there's a picture down below. You can see what happens with GPS. If you have one satellite there, you can see that that satellite can tell you that you're somewhere in this circle. That's because uh, if you figure out how long it takes to send a message up to the satellite and back, well, it says, okay, I know the radius, so it can be here, it can be here. It doesn't know exactly where you are. If you have two satellites, well, they both have that information. So it can say, this satellite can say, you're somewhere on this circle. This one can say, you're somewhere on this circle. And you can see that, that those two circles intersect at these two points. So if you're a boat, two satellites tells you you're in one of those two locations. And three satellites is what it takes to narrow it down and say, well, you have to be exactly there. So that's called triangulation. And we'll say three satellites are needed to triangulate. I'll put triangulate in quotes. an object's location. And that's why it's called triangulate, because you need three. All right, so that's GPS. Uh, we'll say one more thing about satellites, which is the space station. So we've talked a bit about the International Space Station before. Um, space Station and microgravity, just remember that microgravity is apparent weightlessness so for instance on the International Space Station it looks like they're floating away they seem to be weightless but it's due to constant freefall Okay, so in fact, they do still have weight. Um, they still experience gravity. The gravitational field strength, G, on the ISS is about 
newtons per kilogram. So that's not that much less than here on the surface of the Earth. So they're definitely still experiencing gravity, but it seems like they're weightless because they're in constant free fall. Okay, that's all we're going to say about, um, about satellites in that section. Now we'll say satellites in circular orbits. This is where we can do some cool math, like that problem that we saw. So, a couple terms. First one, orbital radius. This is the distance between a satellite and its parent body. And the parent body, that's just, for instance, the Earth, if, if you have a satellite around the Earth. The next one, orbit shape. Most orbits, in fact, are actually elliptical. which means that it's not a perfect circle, it's kind of an oval. But for our purposes, we assume that they're actually circular. So in this class, we assume they're circular to make the math nice and easy. It's not actually true, but that's what we assume. All right, two more terms here, geosynchronous orbit. This is where something orbits, so it's orbit around Earth with a period of one day. So it goes around the Earth once every day. Which means that if you look up in the night sky, you'll see it go by along the same path at exactly the same time of day or time of night every night. It doesn't mean that it's going to be standing still in the sky because it's going to be moving in a different direction than the Earth is moving. Right? It's going around on some, you know, some plane that is not necessarily the plane that the Earth is orbiting around. But still, it means every night it'll be in exactly the same place at the same time. Now, the next one here, geostationary orbit. Well, this is a geosynchronous orbit. Over the equator. And so in this case, it is orbiting on the same axis as the Earth. So if it's over the o equator, we'll say so that It always stays at the same point in the sky. So that really does seem like it's just hanging in the air, not moving at all. The only way you can do that is to have it on the equator, because that will have it have the same sort of um, axis of rotation as the Earth. All right, so those are some terms here. Um, they're good terms to know. Now, we're going to do a bit of math here. This says the gravitational field strength at a distance r above Earth. Okay, if you remember from the previous lesson, we determined that that is g equals big G times the mass of Earth over r squared. Okay, so that's at a distance r above Earth. Our gravitational field strength is little g here, gme over r squared. Now, centripetal acceleration, we have an equation for that. ac is equal to v squared over r. So if something is orbiting around the Earth, it's experiencing centripetal acceleration. The only thing that's causing that acceleration is the gravitational field strength. So we can say g is equal to ac, which is to say that gme over r squared is equal to v squared over r. OK, so here's an interesting relationship. Um, we can 
cross out a bit of R on the bottom here. And that leaves us, if we want to solve for V, V, well, let's do V squared first. V squared is going to equal um, GME over R, which means that V is equal to the square root of GME over R. And that is, that is our equation for the speed that something would be going when it's in orbit around the Earth. And notice, again, it's like the problem that we had before. It depends on g, which is a constant, the mass of Earth, which is a constant, and it just depends on r. So this is the only variable. Which just means that for something to be in orbit, the speed depends exclusively on how far away you are. Okay, so this is our equation. It's a useful equation. We'll work with it on the next page. This says, the International Space Station orbits the Earth at an altitude of about 350 kilometers above Earth's surface. We need to determine the speed needed by the ISS to maintain its orbit. All right, well, we have our equation here. The equation was V equals the square root of G M and actually, I'm just going to leave it as gm, not me, because this equation actually works for anything that you're orbiting around. So gm over r. So if we were orbiting around Saturn, it would be the mass of Saturn. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it as m. So v is square root of gm over r. Okay? Square root of, we've got g is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. The mass of Earth, well, we're going to need to look up that value again. And that's something that you'll have on your equation sheet, the mass of Earth. Um, so it is 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And there is, uh, in your textbook, there's that sort of information all, the, all at the back. You can look that up. Okay, 350 kilometers above Earth's surface. Well, we need to actually um, correct that because that's above Earth's surface. So we need to actually say that the radius here is, we can say 350 times 10 to the 3, so 350,000 meters. And we need to add the Earth's radius onto that because we need to measure from the center of the Earth. So we add on the radius of the Earth, 6.38 times 10 to the 6. meters, and that's what we can use. Okay, when we use all those numbers, we get finally 7.698 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. And if we want to be good about significant digits here, we would say 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. There we go. That's how fast the ISS needs to be going to stay in orbit. Now, the next question is, determine the orbital period of the International Space Station in minutes. Okay, well, um, let's see. We can use the equation T equals 2 pi r over V. Okay, why is that the case? Well, the circumference is 2 pi r. That's the circumference of the Earth. And we're going around that at some speed v. So the, the amount of time it takes to go around once is t, 2 pi r over v. So now we can plug in our numbers again. 2 pi, we had the radius above, was 6.38. Um, oh, sorry. It's going to be 6.38 times 10 to the 6. Oop, hang on a second, I just lost the pen here. Times 10 to the 6 plus 350 times 10 to the 3. Remember, we're, our radius is adding those two together. Okay, and our V is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 3. 
this gives us a period of um, one second here. Okay, so we've got 5,491.7 seconds. And it did say in minutes, so we're going to want to um, convert that into minutes here. So I can say, I can multiply that by, we have one minute is 60 seconds. So this gives us, if I divide by 60, we get 91.53 minutes. And our significant digits tells us that that needs to be 92 minutes. That's how long it takes for it to go around the Earth once. So every hour and a half, the ISS goes around the Earth. That's because it's so low. It has a very low orbital radius, very close to the Earth. Last one here, determine the speeds of Venus and Earth as they orbit the Sun. We have the Sun's mass and Venus's orbital radius and Earth's orbital radius. Great, so we should have enough to, to work with here. We want the speeds. Remember, our equation for speed was v is root g m over r. Okay, now the other thing we're going to need is the mass of Venus and the mass of the Earth, and I happen to have those on hand. So we'll, um, we'll just use those. Again, if this was a test, I would give you those, those values. So let's start with Venus. So V is root G M over R. Oh, and I'm sorry, I lied. You don't need the mass of Venus. That's the beautiful thing here. You only need the mass of the sun. You only need the mass of the thing that you're orbiting around. That's our mass there. So we've got here the root of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times the mass of the sun, 1.99 times 10 to the 30. The sun is very massive. And we'll divide by our orbital radius, 1.08 times 10 to the 11. This gives us 3.51 times 10 to the 4. Meters per second which actually doesn't seem as large as I, I would have expected. It's fast, but it's not crazy fast. Okay, next one here, Earth, same equation, root g m over r. So I can plug in some numbers here. g is 6 point, you're going to definitely remember this, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. It's use it over and over and over again. 1.99 times 10 to the 30. Those numbers are the same from the last uh, problem. And now we're dividing by a new orbital radius, 1.49 times 10 to the 11. And notice that's not too different from Venus, the orbital radius. Okay, this gives us 2.98 times 10 to the 4. Okay. And there we go. So we're further from the sun, which means we're actually moving slower, because we're not experiencing as much gravity from the sun compared to Venus. That's the, the whole lesson. There's your homework at the end. Enjoy.